Hello, uh, welcome to class 19. Uh, and this is something that will help some of your projects. I notice that some of you and your projects are uh, in need of storing things in files. Those things might be save games, so you can save uh, the progress and then restore where you left off. Uh, some of the things might be level uh, setup data that needs to be loaded in from a uh, kind of a maybe a some sort of map file or something like that. And some of it might even be uh, things like high scores or stuff like that. And so what we're going to talk about today is how do we store complex information in files. And to get started with that, um, we have looked at using files before. And the file IO functions uh, methods that we used before allowed us to open a file. And then once it was open, we could read from it, write to it. And then when we were done, we would close it. So in those functions or methods we saw earlier, all the IO was based on character data or string data being written. So in other words, we would do a open the file, write to it, and then close the file. And that would write that single line into that one file. Now, in previous programs, we kind of took advantage of that by writing stuff into there in some structured format. So for example, in our uh, tile map, uh, where we saved off the map lines and loaded them back in. We basically made some kind of methods like this. It had to file, and then you specify the file name, or from file, and you specify the file name. And then that inside of that was code that would go through one line at a time, read what was in the file, and then decide what to do with it. Uh, and like we had, for example, map line or whatever. And it would read that string, and then it would add it to the other string, and then when we were done with the file, it would interpret that as the map that made up the tiles uh, for the file. Now, the problem there was that we had to write the code ourselves to encode the data when saving and then decode the data when we load that back up again. So we had to write the code for both of those methods, to file and from file. We had to, and in some cases, if we changed some format of the file, we added a new key for a different kind of thing, like a, uh, a texture that needs to be loaded. We would need to add some new kind of thing to that. So if we change the object that we wanted to save or load, we would need to change both the to file to save that part of the object, and we would need to change the from file to load that part of the object. But what if we wanted to save uh, a list of objects or an entire game state? Uh, we'd have to write the logic to do that uh, and we'd have to write it on a per object basis with all the methods or all the attributes that are part of that object. And then when we load it back up, we'd have to extract all that. If we change the object in some way, we'd have to add new code to that. And it can become a little bit tedious uh, to synchronize all that. So what would be really useful if there was a way to convert various data types into strings for us. In other words, say, here's an object, make that into a string. And then conversely, we would say, well, here's a string. Let's turn that back into that object. And so the idea there was it would be especially useful if we could encode even complex data objects, uh, items like lists, and dictionaries. So you could take, for example, your list of uh, bullet coordinates, save that off in a file as a string, reload it, and then you'd have all the bullets back where they were in your save game, or your enemies, or your inventory items, or whatever. It could be stored in a dictionary. You could have your uh, inventory stored as a dictionary uh, or a dictionary that has an inventory key in it with all of the items in a list that you have. It'd be cool if you could just say, hey, make this into a string and save it. And then when you load it, say, take that thing from a string and turn it back into that dictionary again. So that brings us to the uh, concept of what we would call serialization. Uh, or in some programming languages, it's called marshalling. But the idea is serialization is the act of taking some sort of object that's stored in memory and then converting it, as, encoding it as a string. And there are a couple ways to do that. We're going to look at a couple of them today, and we're going to look at how you would use that with uh, a file. Okay, so serialization options that are available. Uh, they're cust obviously custom. That's what we did ourselves when we had the to file and from file methods of our uh, tile map that we did a few lectures ago. And then uh, there are some other options available as well. Pickle, which is uh, something that's st a standard module that comes with Python. Um, there are some advantages and disadvantages to each of these that we'll talk about. JSON 
is a more readable way of serializing objects. It was borrowed from JavaScript. Uh, it's kind of become an industry standard way of serializing data for transmitting it across the uh, internet or across the web or saving things in files. Um, there are a couple of other ones that I'm going to mention here that we're not going to talk about today. Message Pack, uh, which is cross-platform, cross-language, uh, but that is really good for encoding and decoding network game data if you're going to make a, a network game because it's more compact than either Pickle or JSON. And it's also language independent, meaning that uh, Pickle is Python specific, JSON is somewhat language independent, uh, but it's more lengthy in its encodings. But in a lot of times in a game, it's important to have a very compact format for the data if it's going across the network to make things go faster, uh, reduce the amount of data that you're sending across the network, and Message Pack is good for that. And then XML, which is uh, extensible markup language, it's kind of grew out of HTML where there are tags for everything. Uh, that can be used to store things in this hierarchical, structured way uh, that's human readable. It's a text format. So you see XML used quite a bit for things. Maybe you've seen that uh, used in something before. The two that we're going to talk about today, we've already done custom in previous uh, code that we've written. So the two we're going to talk about today is Pickle and JSON. And there's a really cool thing you could do with Pickle. Uh, there's another module that goes with that that makes it super easy to use in your Python code. We're going to look at that uh, as well. All right, so let's get started. So custom, let's talk about that. That's what we did previously with our two file and from file methods. And if we go that custom route, it's going to be our responsibility as the programmer to write the code that encodes the data as a string or file. And then we also have to write the code that opens that file or takes the data from the file and converts it uh, back to the data from that string or file. And there are a lot of ways to do that. The way we did that before is we would load each line. We would then split it based on the equal sign. We'd look at what key was on the uh, left side of the equal sign, and depending on the key, we had a different thing that we did with it with what was on the right side of the equal sign. And we had to do some conversions and maybe split the thing on the right on commas or whatever, uh, but it's up to us to write all that code. And we've since we've done that before, you can go back and look at how we did that in the tile module that we wrote. Uh, you can look at that code and how that is done in there to load the, uh, the level from a file, load the map from a file. So I'm not going to spend any time on it here today. I want to focus on the new things. So let's get started with that. Pickle. So Pickle is a standard Python module, uh, and it is designed to allow the serialization of almost any Python object, that is, especially those that are purely Python. So what does that mean, serialization? That means it can take a Python object and convert it into a string of bytes, and it allows us to convert that string of bytes back into a Python object. So most programming languages have a similar feature uh, called, like I said earlier, it's called serialization or marshalling. Uh, but Pickle is language specific to Python. It's designed to work with Python. It's Python specific. Uh, so if you do use this, then you can't, it gets harder to have your Python uh, pickled data uh, interact with something that's like a server that's written in another language. So let's go and dig in and look at how Pickle works. But if you're doing everything in Python and you're only saving files in Python, this works really well. All right, so to use Pickle, first we have to import it. We don't have to download it. You don't have to install it. It comes with Python since it's a standard module. You just have to import it. So we say import Pickle. And it's kind of a, a silly name, <laughs> Pickle. Um, but think of it like uh, when you put stuff in jars. You're, you're storing it uh, away for a time, and then you pull it back out of the, open the jar and pull it back out later. So the idea here is once imported, we can use one of its uh, methods. So there are kind of two of those that are um, important to start with here. And then we're going to look at a, another way to do this in a second. But we basically use the pickle module, pickle.dump. Dump is what takes an object and stores it in a file. So we say pickle.dump. We give it the object reference here. So this would be, uh, I don't know, inventory dictionary or player dictionary or bullet list or whatever. And then here, the comma, file handle. This file handle would be an already opened file. So that's how you take an object and dump it into that file. And to pull that object back out of the file, you do pickle.load. So notice these are opposite. Dump and load are opposite of each other. So load takes the file handle and it returns the object at that position in the file. 
So you might note that the file has to already be open. You can also dump multiple objects into a file and then reload them all later, as long as you do it in the same order that you dump them. It has to be the same order that you load them. And uh, so in other words, you could open a, pick, open a file and then do pickle.dump of the player uh, object, the bullet objects, the enemy list, the uh, inventory items, whatever you want, as long as you took all of those objects and pickled them or dumped them in that order when you would open that file again for reading and you do pickle.load. If you did this, that object equal and then pickle.load on each of those, you would get the same stuff back in memory uh, that you stored into there. Now there is another way to use pickle and I actually prefer this since it gives me a little more control over uh, things, but essentially you can use pickle with, instead of dump, you can use dumps, which is, uh, which sounds even stupider than just pickle, pickle.dumps. Um, but pickle.dumps, the S at the end means string. So that, what that does is rather than saving it into file, it take into a file, it takes this object that we put in the parentheses and it makes a string representation of that, this byte string. And then there's pickle.loads where we feed this a byte string and then we get that object back out of that. So that allows us to do things, uh, with the byte arrays of those objects, like you could then send, take that string and send it across the network to a client. Uh, and then they could do pickle.loads of the string they received and they would have that object back again. And we are gonna play around with a little bit with uh, multiplayer network coding uh, a little bit later on um, in the semester. We don't have much time left and we've only got really next week uh, left to do things, so, but I have a couple more of these lectures planned for next week that I want to get through. All right, so the idea here is that um, we could use our pickled objects, use our own file specification, or send the strings across the network to transfer objects between two machines, but the idea there is this gives us the pickled uh, or serialized string that we can then do whatever we want with it, store it in a file ourselves, uh, send it across the network, and uh, call loads on it to put it back into an object. And the cool thing about this is since everything in Python is really an object, that gives us a lot of possibilities. Now the only thing that Pickle doesn't really work on are things that are not native Python uh, objects. So things in Pygame that it wouldn't work on would be things like surfaces. Surfaces behind the scenes are implemented in SDL, which is a library that's written in C language. Uh, and just has a wrapper around to talk to it. So you couldn't really pickle uh, a, uh, a Pygame surface, but you could pickle other things like the bullets in a list, the, um, the inventory items that you have in a dictionary, all of that other stuff you could pickle. All right, so here are some examples. So here's pickling numbers, like I say high score, and I put the number 10,000 in it. And then the pickled score string, I do pickle.dump, so that's gonna produce a string from high score. And then I'm gonna store it in this variable pickled score. So if I print out pickled score, I'll see the byte array, the string that represents that. And so you can see uh, that this thing here represents that number 10,000 that we have up there. And notice that it's not really human friendly. It's kind of hard to read that. We look at that and it's got this uh, slash x80, which is a hex number 80, hex 4, so it's hex 80049504000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
of tuples. So this is where pickle gets to be more useful. So in this case, we have this high scores list where we have one, two, three, four scores in there that each have a name and a number associated with them. And I can do a pickle.dumps on that whole thing. Rather than each string and each number individually, I just do the whole thing. And it creates this giant string here that looks like this. And you can kind of see parts of it in there. Uh, player one has two scores, player one, player three, Paul, And then you'll notice when I unpickle it and use pickle.loads on that byte array, that byte string, I get back the list of tuples that I fed in. And notice it looks exactly like it did uh, up here. It's the same order, the same values, the same set of strings, the same tuples, the same list in the same order is what I get back out. And that's where this gets really useful for storing game state information is you can just stick that in a file and say high scores load it back up out of that file and say, hey, here's the high scores. And you get that list back out just as if you were to type it in your code to assign it like we did up here. And notice that in this case, that's a list of tuples where each tuple contains a string and a number. And that's what we got back. That's what we fed in. That's what we got back out. List of tuples. Each one contains a string and a number. And Pickle automatically handles that mix of types and, and organization hierarchy without any problem whatsoever. It's very easy to use. Uh, also with Pickle, we can use Pickle classes. So here I can say take this class ball and feed it in. Pickle.dumps, I can say ball, and that will create uh, this class that we could then unpickle and use later. We can also pickle functions. Uh, one th note of warning though is that classes and functions can both be stored and loaded this way and that could create a security vulner vulnerability in your program if you allow somebody to send you a string and then you execute that as a function. They could send you a string that does something malicious in code. Uh, so generally it's not suggested that you pickle functions or class methods and then allow somebody to arbitrarily then unpickle that and run that code because they could send you malicious uh, code. So if you're building a web-based system, don't do that generally. Now, one other uh, really useful thing is here is uh, an instance. So I can pickle an instance or I can pickle a list of object instances. So here's a list of, here's one ball object that I pickle. Here's 10 of them that I pickled and it will do that. And then when I unpickle them, they'll all come back. So in other words, if you had a game where bullets were currently flying through the air and enemies were in certain places and the player was here and the treasures were wherever they are. You could pickle each of those things and save them in a file and load it back up. When that gets loaded, the bullets would be in the same place as they were before, moving in the same way. Uh, the enemies would be where you left off. The treasures would be where you left off. The player object score would be the same. And so you can actually pickle uh, entire lists of object instances like that and they'll be reloaded just the way that they were stored. And the final one that's uh, particularly useful here, I mentioned dictionaries being pickleable. Here's the player dictionary where we have the name of the player, their class as an elf, their score, their health, their X and Y position on the screen, their speed, their direction, whatever. But you can basically just use pickles, pickle dumps on that and it will pickle that whole thing. And then if you unpickle that, you'll get back all of the same things in the same places uh, that you did. And notice in this case, how much easier that is than what we had to do with our objects for our from file and to file in our tile based system. Uh, and note that the dictionaries can have any key value pair. And that allows the values in here to even be lists. So you could have inventory colon and then have a list over here, or you could have uh, um, achievements and then a list of those achievements here and it could pickle all of those. It'll handle that on its own. Now, one of the things is, well, how do we get those pickled strings into a file? And you could do it yourself, but again, Python has made that easy for us. There's a module called the shelve module. And what shelf, shelf does is it allows us to store objects in a file under the name of a keyword string. So it uses pickle and a dictionary to accomplish that and it does the work for us for us, uh, but it's really easy to use so we don't have to worry about the order of the data in the file or how the data gets stored. Again, uh, it just does it for us. So in this case, how do we use it? We import shelve. 
and then we can do items.shelf.open. We provide the name of the file. And then once that file is open, we can treat it just like a dictionary. So we can say items high score equal Paul, items high score value equal 10,000, items level checkpoint equal 10, items best time 109.32. And then as soon as I do an items.sync, it will save all of these keys with these values into that file for us. So the next time I load that file up, I could then say items equals shelf.open, and I could just access this string, high score name, and it would give me Paul back. And I could access this uh, key in that dictionary, high score value, and I'd get 10,000 back. So notice it becomes very easy then to just say import shelf, items equals shelf.open, provide the same file we did before, and now I can just read out those things just like they were stored in a local dictionary even though they're in a file. So note that shelf items can be accessed just like any dictionary. The, the going to the file and from the file, the pickling and unpickling is done behind the scenes by the shelf module automatically. And shelves can be used to store any item that is pickleable. So that means you can store dictionaries, lists of object instances, uh, strings, numbers, lists of tuples, pretty much anything that you could run through pickle, you can stick into there. And the reason that that works is because it uses pickle behind the scenes. So that makes storing game state data really easy, but there is one drawback to, if you're only using Python, I would suggest using shell, but works great, but there is one drawback. And that drawback is that uh, if you use pickle and shelve to store game data, it uses that binary format that is specific to Python only and not very human friendly to read. So that creates a number of problems like files, and data aren't human readable or editable. In other words, if you open that file, you can't really tell what it's storing uh, and where it's storing it without intimate understanding of how Pickle works. It also means that the files and data are not usable in other programming languages or by other utilities that are written in other programming languages because it's all using Pickle and Shell, which are Python specific. Uh, also, Pickle functions and classes could pose a security threat. We talked about that. Generally, you just don't store those things in there. And also pickled data isn't always as compact as it should be. If we go back to where that 10,000 was stored, it took a lot more bytes than even the string 10000. It took more bytes of data to store that than we started with. So it's not a compact storage mechanism. So still uh, pickle and shelve, if you're only writing something for Python, it's a really easy way to just store game state data. You just create a, a key in the dictionary, stick whatever data you want in it. It could be High score list, uh, so items, square bracket, in quotes, high score list, equal, and you stick the high score list in there. Uh, items, square bracket, and then their uh, inventory, player inventory items, equal. And then you have your inventory items dictionary or list, and it just stores it. And when you load it, you just do the opposite and say, hey, load up the inventory items, the player inventory items, load up the high score list, and it just does it all behind the scenes for you. So super easy. But this not being human readable and editable, uh, not being usable by other programming languages, and having it not be as compact as it could be, um, let's look at an alternative to that. And one of the alternatives that has kind of become something of a, a industry-wide standard uh, for saving data and loading it is JSON. And JSON is JavaScript object notation. It was created, obviously, for the JavaScript language uh, and JavaScript programs to exchange data with each other. And it was designed, unlike the Python pickle module, rather than being binary uh, formatted, it was designed to be text formatted and human readable when encoded. So in other words, you could look at a JSON file and pick out what it's trying to encode relatively easily. Um, the, uh, and so that's one of the advantages of it. The other advantage is because it's not Python specific and it's widely supported by almost every programming language has some way to read and write JSON uh, or encode and decode JSON. That makes it more universally applicable. Uh, it's also relatively compact, uh, easy to encode and decode. Uh, so let's look at how to use JSON. So JSON, uh, first we need to import it again. You don't need to install anything. JSON now also comes with Python. So you just say import JSON. Once it's imported, we actually, the way it was designed for the Python interface, it worked, uses the same methods we had for Pickle. So if we wrote our code using Pickle, we can just replace that with JSON 
dot dump json dot load and this the rest of it looks the same the only difference is rather than saying pickle here it says json and it actually even works at the string level so json dot dumps dumps to a string json dot loads loads from a string so the only difference here in how we're using it is how the data is actually encoded and there is one other difference though, and that's what we can encode is a little more limited when using JSON than it was with uh, Pickle. So let's take a look. So first off, when encoding with JSON, we're limited to the following types of things. So dictionaries, lists, and values. So dictionaries um, are basically a collection of string value pairs. They're encoded by enclosing with curly braces. Lists are uh, arrays, or what are called JSON arrays, and those are ordered lists of values. They're enclosed in square brackets. And then values could be a string, a number, uh, an object, an array, uh, literal, true, literal, false, and null. Now, one of the things to note is there's no provision in JSON for encoding things like functions and classes, which we really should avoid anyway, and also instances. Notice there's no way to really uh, encode an instance. So, and there's also no way to store tuples. Those are always in, stored as JSON arrays or lists. All right, so let's look at some examples here. So we import JSON, score equal 100, speed equal 15.2, player name equal player one. So if I do json.dumps on score, it encodes it as quote 100. Notice that is very readable. You can tell that's a 100, unlike pickle where it was some weird bunch of bytes. JSON.dumps speed. 15.2, that looks like 15.2, and json.dumps player one, it comes in as player one in double quotes, because that's a string. But you'll notice how human readable that is. And that also makes it so we could open a file that's storing those and very easily know what is what. And those values could be stored in lists or dictionaries and stored in JSON, so here's an example. Uh, of a dictionary, player dictionary, name, class, score, health, x, y, speed, direction. And if I say dump that dictionary, I get a thing that says name, player one, class, elf, score zero, health 100, x 400, y 300, speed 0 0.1, direction 45.4. And notice that's human readable. We can actually look at that encoding and tell that A, it's a dictionary because it's got curly braces, and then key, colon, value, comma, key, colon, value, colon, key, comma, value, and so forth, all the way through the whole thing. And then for lists, here's a list of tuples, like we saw before, player one, like this is the high scores, player one, 10, player one, 20, player three, 30, player, or Paul, 40. JSON.dumps high scores, we get it stored like this. Notice this is a little bit different than Python because we don't, JSON does not have the uh, support for tuples, but it stored, converts them to lists. So we get a list of lists that looks exactly like the thing that we stored with even in, uh, storing the order, including storing the order, maintaining the order. And then one difficulty is that we can't encode object instances like we could with pickles. So in other words, here's a ball object. Um, if I create an instance of that and try to use json.dumps on that ball object instance, B1, I get this uh, type error that gets raised and it says object of type ball is not JSON serializable. But there is a clever way to encode an object's object instance's attributes. And that is that um, an object's instance's attributes values are actually stored inside of the underscore underscore dict underscore underscore dictionary of the instance. And we could both retrieve uh, that dictionary and assign it a new value. So in other words, if I create this object instance here, b1, and I were to read out b1 dot underscore underscore dict underscore underscore, I'm going to get that dictionary that has x as whatever value it's associated with and y as whatever value it's associated with. So in other words, I'm getting just the dictionary of attributes and the values associated with them, like this. So I can actually then feed that into json.dumps, and I can get that dictionary in there. And I could load that up. And that will work so long as all of the object attributes are JSON compatible. If they aren't, 
then we could custom encode them before using JSON by putting them into some other string format uh, before we do that. Or looking if it's an object instance is in there, we could get just the dict underscore underscore dict part of that uh, and set all of that. So quick JSON summary here. Uh, JSON allows us a way to encode data that's both human readable and compact and fast. Uh, it is, however, a little more limited for Python, uh, but we can get around that if we absolutely need to. And one problem that remains with both JSON and Pickle is they're not always as compact in their encoding as, as we'd like. Uh, and for network programs, we might want to keep the size of the transfer data as small as possible. Uh, there is, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a fast and more compact method than either JSON or Pickle. And one of the ones that I've used before and actually like that's cross-platform and pretty widely used, it's called Message Pack or MSG Pack. And so let's take a real quick look at how Message Pack works. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but Message Pack does not come with Python, so you'd have to install it. So to install it, uh, there, are two, there are two ways that I would suggest doing that. Uh, and you can do pip from the command prompt, pip install Message Pack, that'll install it if you have pip uh, in your search path. If not, then you can find where pip lives in your uh, Python install and go to that directory and then run it from there. But this will install it. Or uh, one of the ways that I like to do this, I think is easy, is run a Python shell. And then from in the shell prompt, just import pip dot underscore internal. So this is, this is actually doing the same thing in two different ways. And then once pip has been imported, then do pip dot underscore internal dot main. And then you can pass in install message pack, which notice install message pack is the same thing we put on the command line up here. We're just passing it into the main function and that will install message pack for you. So once it's installed, then how do we use it? Well, it's pretty much the same interface that we had with, uh, with the uh, both pickle and JSON it has a dumps has a loads, has a dump, has a load. So we basically just say message pack.dumps and then we put the value in there. So in this case, if I do a message pack.dumps of the score, which was 100, notice I get this D. If I do message pack.dumps of speed, notice I get this thing, this string here. And you'll notice that that is shorter than uh, the strings were for pickle, really sh much shorter for the number 100. And notice the string, it gets stored about the same length as pickle, or, or as uh, JSON, but shorter than with pickle. But you'll notice that message pack, uh, the usage of it, how we use it, is the same as with pickle, same as with JSON, only the encoding is different. Now for dictionaries with message pack, notice that that works as well. So here we can say message pack.dumps, uh, player dictionary. There's the string that it generates for that. Uh, here's the high score list, message pack.dumps high scores. There's the list for that. And to give you an idea of how much smaller it is than uh, JSON and Pickle, I, I did encodings of those high scores and uh, that ball object in each of these and printed out the size. So message pack.dumps of that high scores list was 38 bytes in using message pack. It was 65 and 61 using JSON and Pickle. So notice much bigger uh, in the other two. And for uh, dumping a ball in object instance, which remember had an X and a Y position, it came out to be 11 bytes in message pack, came out to be 20 bytes in JSON, 54 bytes uh, in Pickle. So much bigger in Pickle, almost, over tr almost five times the size uh, of message pack. And that size reduction and cross language uh, compatibility really makes message pack an attractive option, especially for network communication where you're sending uh, network data in a multiplayer game. And we'll look at that uh, multiplayer game concept later on. You can use pickle, you can use JSON for those, but if you have a game and you need it to be fast, you need to keep the packet size small, uh, especially if you're using something like UDP. Uh, to transfer real-time packet data, then message pack can be a really useful uh, module to use for that. Okay, so quick summary. Uh, each of those methods that we talked about today have some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, 
you know, a common method for making a save file for each is to put all the data into a dictionary called something like game state, and then just encode that dictionary. And uh, really, which of those you use depends on what you want for your uh, project. If you use uh, want something that's human editable, editable, and not editable, you can't really eat the file, human editable uh, and human readable, then use JSON. If you want something that uh, allows any Python objects and instances, then I'd suggest using pickle and shell because they're really easy to use. If you don't care about human editable, human readable files, just use pickle and shell. It's built into Python, easy to use. Uh, you don't have to worry about how the data is being stored. And if you want something that is uh, high speed, compact, uh, suitable for network transport, uh, and also cross language compatible, use message pack. Um, and like I said, there are other options as well, such as XML. Uh, that's outside of the scope of what I'm going to talk about today because I want to keep the uh, lecture down to about 45 minutes or so today, and I think we're going to actually going to beat that. Um, but the problem with XML is it's much slower, uh, a little bit more complicated to use, more verbose than the options that we presented here. Um, and I actually like the op all three of the options I presented here, but for different applications. So if I just want to, if I'm just writing a Python program and I want to quickly make a, a save file, I just use pickle and shelf. If I'm making something where I want that save file to be human readable, I'll use JSON. If I want something that I'm going to send over the network, I'll use message pack. And the really cool thing about those three methods is they really have a load method, a dump method, a loads method, and a dumps method. And they work pretty much the same way. The only difference is on the back end how it encodes the data. So it's really easy to switch from one to the other with relative ease. And in a lot of cases too, uh, there are cases where you want to have control over all of it yourself. And so sometimes I'll use a combination of a custom encoding plus uh, something like a JSON. So I might have my file that has key value pairs in it, uh, like we did for the uh, the load file for our tile world uh, level loading, map loading. And in those cases, I might use a combination where the key is what kind of thing it is on the left of the equal sign, and on the right of the equal sign is a JSON encoded string of that thing. Um, but you can get something that's pretty close by just putting the stuff in a dictionary, like I said up here called game state, and just encode that game state uh, using uh, json.dumps or pickle.dumps or message pack.dumps and then load that back up from the file and uh, use loads on it and you have that dictionary back into memory. So with just a few lines of code you can save off an entire game state and load an entire game state as long as the objects in that game state are uh, serializable by whichever one of those methods we are using. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, everybody stay safe, work on your projects. Hopefully those of you that needed to save game state or save games, uh, that helps. And for your projects, um, if you're not doing something network-based, uh, I'd probably just say use Pickle and Shell. Those are probably your easiest options. So you might rewind the video and look at the code I had up there uh, for that. The cool thing is if you don't, if you're using uh, Pickle and shelve, it's going to be really easy. The difficult part is if you try to open one of those files and look at how the data is stored, it's going to be just a bunch of bytes stored in there. So it's going to be complicated to look at and edit. But it'd be pretty easy to switch over to JSON uh, from that if necessary or message pack. So anyway, good luck on your projects. If you need help with anything, let me know. Uh, like I say, we are going to have a few more of these uh, special topics lectures that we've been going over. Uh, I want to cover a, a few more special topics here for you to look at and incorporate into your games. Um, so look for those. Uh, and again, if you need help, send me a text message. Uh, shoot me an uh, email. We can set up a Zoom. Uh, or I can come down and sit beside you. Uh, I just got my second dose of the vaccine. So uh, I'll be much more able to be around other people safely and sit side by side with you soon. So just keep that in mind as well. I, I can still come and sit down with you now with a mask on as long as you're wearing a mask. And we really should keep wearing masks even after we're vaccinated. Um, 
at least for now. But anyway, stay safe, work on your projects, let me know if you need help. And also get out and enjoy the nice weather. And don't stress too much. Bye.